Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to my channel and welcome if you're new. So today we are going to be doing another beginner's guide to cross out video and I want to go over in this segment what new player mistakes you should not make. And there's a few of them that I really want to talk about and clarify and the first one I want to talk about is weapon placement. This is something that almost every new player gets wrong and it's understandable why but inexperience uh, when you're inexperienced you can make some mistakes so when it comes to weapon placement you don't want to mount it on something like you don't want to mount it like here on the armor piece or um, you know something like that you, you don't want to do anything like that the reasoning behind that is because if these armor pieces get blown off, even if their durability is pretty good like this one here, it's not going to take too much from a cannon shot or missiles or something to knock this part off. And once that part goes, your gun goes with it. So that's why you do not want to mount onto an armor piece with one exception. And the exception I'm talking about is buggy parts and gun mounts. These have bullet pass through, which means that bullets will go through them, uh, damage will go through them, they have 90% damage resistance, and that helps so that the part that these guns are mounted to, which would be for this one a buggy floor, they won't get blown off nearly as easily as something like this, or this, or this, you know, stuff like that. So you always want to make sure that you have something with damage pass through that you can mount these on or you can mount them on your frames. Um, or another good option is your cabin is always a good option to mount a gun on as well. So those are the suggestions that I have and I highly suggest you do that to prevent your weapons from falling off sooner than you would like. And that's how I have this one kind of built. I have um, I have mine set up like this. I got a small buggy floor thing over here. I'll show you some more of the parts. So these are what I'm talking about. You got a buggy engine cover, buggy trunk, gun mount, left buggy corner, uh, anything that has damage pass through. And there's another one that they recently added which is the right and left elbow. A lot of people have started using these, including myself, to mount weapons on because they also have the 90% damage resistance. So that's what you want to do. You don't want to mount them on armor or, you know, any of these pieces or anything like that. They're just going to fall off super, super fast. And, you know, that's something you don't want to have happen in a game like this. And then... The next thing I want to go over is movement parts. Now, one mistake that new players that I've seen make uh, quite a few times is new players will think that the more wheels you have, the better. In some rare cases, that is true. But on an average day-to-day -day basis for a daily driver car, something like this, what I would suggest that I've found over many times of trial and error, the sweet spot number for the amount of movement parts to have on a vehicle is six. <clears throat> and you can use multiple different combinations of wheels. The one that I like to use is two non-ST wheels. So two wheels, <clears throat> excuse me, two wheels that do not steer. Uh, I'll show you what I mean. So something like this. Any wheel with ST after the name means that it turns, it steers. So uh, the combination that I like to use is two non-ST wheels and two or uh, four ST wheels for a total of six. And I feel like that is a sweet spot. That's what I've always had luck with. And you can use a couple different combinations with that regard. You can put two ST wheels on the back two on the front, and then two non-STs in the center for a little less traction and uh, still good maneuverability. 
or something I like to do on some of my builds to have a little bit more traction and control is I'll take the arrays or not the arrays the non ST wheels and I'll put them in the back like a normal car <clears throat> and I'll put two S or yeah two STs in the middle or further up rather and two in the front and that will allow you to have a bit more traction a little bit more control over your vehicle um, but you need to be careful with it though make sure that you know the wheels in the middle the wheels in the back if you're gonna do that are spaced out enough to where your turning isn't so sluggish before you accelerate enough that you just can't turn I, I've had that issue before so be careful of that and then the next thing I want to go over is a mistake that a lot of players make and this is probably one of the most common mistakes well these are all pretty common mistakes but this is one of the more common ones so I see a lot of players that will take explosive parts such as this generator here or ammo packs gas tanks um, you know anything that goes boom they'll put it like on the side or on the top of their car or you know in the back which isn't as bad you know they'll put it something like that which ain't as bad but still not very good um, now that's something you don't want to do and the reasoning behind that is because when this goes boom you go boom with it so that's a mistake you don't want to make you do not want your generator out in the open where somebody can see it and yes even in the back if somebody blows off your armor on the back which is the most common spot you're gonna get shot from they will expose your generator ammo pack etc and it's gonna go boom so what I like to do and what most experienced players do is they'll make a car with a frame called an open frame now what is an open frame an open frame is just you know a frame where you have some open spots in it like this just a couple of open spots or one open spot where you can put all of your explosive stuff you can put you know anything that you want to protect that you want to uh, keep on your vehicle for longer without it getting destroyed and this is a really good way to do that and the only way that they're really gonna get to that is if they a have a scorpion or B you flip over and all of that is just exposed and your belly up and they have access to it so this is a really good way to hide all of that stuff and protect it it's a lot better than having it just pretty much anywhere else on your car <clears throat> And I'll give you a little run through here. I'll do like a little little fly through on how my frame is set up. You can pause it if you, whoop, that was a little too fast. You can pause it if you need to. But yeah, so I mean, that's one mistake I see really common it's very common for that to happen and the reason why this is open back here I had an engine here I took it off for video purposes but yes um, so keep that in mind when you're building if you have anything explosive do not put it out in the open it is a huge mistake waiting to happen another big mistake that I see new players doing especially well, mostly when playing with friends and this is a game that is much more fun if you do play with friends clan mates etc and so that's uh, an option that most people default to uh, now what you don't want to do is if you're gonna go play with a friend you don't want to have your friend be like nine or ten thousand power score and then you're sitting over here with like 1200 power score that is not going to work out for the person that has lower power score and the reasoning behind that is when you form a party with power scores that are that vast in difference what's going to happen is the game is going to prioritize matchmaking for the person with the higher power score vehicle and what's going to happen is once you do get into a match it might take decades at that rate to get into a match because of the lower power score person but when you do get into a match what's going to happen 
is you're going to notice that the lobby is filled with people that are more close to the person with the high power score. So if you have a person with 1200 power score and someone with 10,000 power score, you're probably going to get a lobby full of people that are 9 to 11 or 12,000 power score. And you don't want to be playing in a match like that if you're the lower power score person. You're not going to be able to do anything. You're probably not going to have any fun. I mean, if that's how you want to play, by all means, have at it. But for most people who actually want to do well, have a chance at the game and, you know, be able to do something besides just try and run away from people and die, um, you don't want to make that mistake. So what I suggest is if you're going to be playing with friends and they have, you know, they got experience at the game and their higher power score, they have these badass vehicles and you don't, um, just make sure that you guys can cooperate and come up with a power score that works best for both of you. Uh, and what I mean by that is say again that your 1200 power score, your friend is 8,000 power score. You want your friend to lower their power score to within, I, I would say the best thing that I found or the best match I found is have your friend lower their power score to within 500 of your current power score. And you will find matches easier that way and you will also be able to stand a chance while playing in a lobby instead of getting absolutely dumpstered. Because another thing you have to take into account is if you don't, if you don't get any points in a match, or you do almost nothing in a match, you're not getting XP, which means you're not leveling up, you're not progressing. If you bought the battle pass, you're not progressing the battle pass. You're not, you know, getting XP to level up to get better stuff, to unlock better stuff, to unlock new game modes, things like that. And that's something I want to change in the community. So that, you know, that's why I'm making this video is to help you guys and to get you off to a better start than you might have otherwise been without seeing a video like this. Uh, so yeah, just, you know, try and come up with a good, you know, power score arrangement for both of you guys' vehicles if you're playing with friends. And, you know, just make sure your friend isn't too much over you. Like I said, within 500 power score of one another seems to be the sweet spot if you're playing with friends, especially if you're a new player. And... Another thing I want to talk about is if you are going to be playing PvP like you just you just got into the game, you want to hop into PvP, that's fine. But I would say by the time you hit level 3, one thing I highly suggest that you guys do that will gain you much more XP much faster is you can see here there's a blue like star icon here on the map because once you hit like level three or so you can unlock all these goodies on the map but when you first start you're just gonna have a couple of pvp modes eventually you'll get this stuff so just check once you hit level three level four or five whatever when you see that you have this awakening mode available go do that i highly suggest you go do that play through the entirety of that until you can't anymore because you will hit a wall at some point where you need to be a higher power score you need to be a higher account level to progress in the story but this is by far the best way to gain xp and if you follow uh my guidance from my previous cross out beginners guide if you mix some of those tips that i gave you in that video along with playing the adventure mode you will gain so much xp so quick that levels 1 through 10 will fly by and so that's one thing I highly recommend new players do as soon as you have awakening available uh, go play it and trust me it is so much easier if you play it with friends if you play it solo that's fine too I always did it solo for the most part but if you play with friends it's going to make your adventure much easier but the payout for XP is great and it will help you level up so much quicker. On top of that, you also get resources. Uh, you get scrap and you get copper. Now, once you hit level seven, you unlock the market. You will be able to sell those resources on the market to make yourself a bit of gold. And another mistake that people make, especially new players, is they think the best thing to do is craft. 
That used to be the case five years ago, or even four years ago. <clears throat> but because the market itself has changed so much over the years, and because crafting has changed over the years, crafting is no longer the most efficient way to make gold. The most efficient way that I found to make gold is just straight up sell your resources, or the one thing I would suggest crafting, if you go to factions and go to engineers, I believe it is, you scroll down to repair kits. If you craft these repair kits, you get a stack of five for every every time you craft. And every single singular one sells for 455 or if you want to quick sell them which is just what i do uh <clears throat> with most of my stuff but because they're so similar in price you could just go down to like for example 454 or 453 for your stack of repair kits this is the most efficient way that i personally found that i like to make gold and by gold i mean the coins at the top here the 48456 with the c icon <clears throat> But selling repair kits, you sell them quick, and the the amount of gold you get is pretty small. But because you get so many repair kits every time you craft one of these, you get five. So that means if you craft repair kits four times, that's a total of 20 repair kits that you have to sell. Now multiply that by, you know, this number minus 10% for the market cost. That's what you have every single time and it doesn't cost much to craft these so if you are in in a place where you're like i don't know how to make gold i don't know what to do i want to make gold so i can get better stuff you know whatever this is one of the best ways to do that so i highly suggest that when you can and you got the materials for it go ahead and craft these and it's going to start off slow you're not going to be able to craft a whole crap ton right away but you might be able to craft once or twice, giving you five or ten. Go ahead and sell them, and then just rinse and repeat every time you get enough. Craft some repair kits, throw them on the market, boom, there you go. Cash money in your bank. And so, that's pretty much how I always make money if I don't buy packs or anything like that. But, um, yeah, so I hope this video helped you guys. I think that's pretty much it. If I can think of anything else, I'll maybe do a part two. But I just wanted to make a video like this to kind of help out new players, anybody who may be looking for some guidance, how to do better in the game. Um, maybe if they're not happy with their vehicle and how to make it better. Um, anything to help you guys out to get you on the road to success. That's why I did this video. I want to help you guys be good at the game, even if I got to deal with you in the future and get my butt kicked. That means I did something right. So... Hope you enjoyed the video. If it helped, leave a like. If you liked the video, make sure to subscribe for more. Don't forget to check out my last beginner's guide video. Excellent video for anybody who's looking for more XP and quicker ways to level up. Definitely check that out. But that's going to be it for today, guys. But this is the newest tech in games, and I'll catch you on the next one.